This week we're talking about day ones. Um, we just dropped the visual. <clears throat> just dropped the visual. And uh, you guys ate it up, man. The first day I posted a snippet on Instagram, we got some great responses. So thank you to anybody that gave a, a fist emoji, a fire emoji. If you said it was dope, if you said this is you know, classic, whatever you said, I just thank you so much. I'm gonna cut this beat off because it's gonna make me want to start rapping. Um, day one's featuring Tom Guess, visual by Michael Freeman, and the beat is by Living Beats, um, which is somebody new um, that I found on YouTube. Um, day one's is like, I'm one of those people that I, I, my friendships, I, I really value my friendships. A lot of the people that are in my circle, people that I talk to every day, I've known for 10 years, 15, 20 years, and maybe even more. Uh, so, I was talking to my brother, Cut, and he didn't even know this story about how I met Tom Giss. <clears throat> If you didn't know, Tom Giss is not only one of my friends, um, but also he's one of my favorite artists for years, right? And um, he is my introduction into the music industry. It was 1998. <clears throat> I was like a, a sophomore or something in high school. And I was on the corner with my friends playing beats, freestyling like we did in Ivy Hill, uh, Ivy Hill section of North where uh, people like Rod Digger, uh, Tisha Campbell, uh, Lauren Hill, Wyclef, all of those people are from that area, right? I'm freestyling on the corner and this guy Duke pulls up in his van and he's like, yo, that's a nice beat. You make beats? I was like, yeah, I guess. I mean, I made beats just for me and my friends to freestyle. Like me and like Chase and uh, Pure back in the day. And uh, Dave, David J. And, you know, uh, a lot of the people, Nums. A lot of the people back in the day that we used to get busy. <clears throat> so the beat that I made was just a little beat I made on my little Yamaha keyboard. And I made it just for me to rap on. He was like, uh, give me a beat tape. I was like. Okay, so I put a couple of the beats that I had on a tape, not a CD, a tape. Mind you, this is 1998. I put the beats on the tape. He's like, I got an artist that wants to um, buy this beat from you. His name is Ant Arrogance, right? He wasn't going by Tom Giss name. He was going by Ant Arrogance. And I was like, all right. So, quick sidebar. At the time, in the 90s, my brother was an MC that was really good, that got a lot of respect in the, in the region, uh, running in the same circles as Redman and uh, Laws in the Underground and uh, Diesel Don and The Governor and uh, Madware, Hardware. I, mean, I think it's Madware, Hardware. Uh, shout out Sev, shout out Haas, Haas the Ripper, those same circles, right? So <clears throat> he used to record with Ken Johnson which is the uh, the Grammy Award winning engineer that uh, engineered um, Lauryn Hill's album, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. And he had a studio called Perfect Pair. And this is where they did The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, the, like one of the most incredible albums of all time. So Duke picks me up in his van and he takes me to Perfect Pair. And I never been there before. My brother was signed to Ken Johnson, so he was always there. He was working on his album, which was amazing. And uh, this is my like one of my first times in the studio. Um, so I see this guy and arrogance, and in my head, um. I'm like, yo, this dude plays for the Knicks. Like, he had like a a a build like like Chris Childs on one of them. Like, I, he had 
the height. And I thought he played for the Knicks. For whatever reason, when I saw Ant Arrogance, I thought he played for the Knicks. I was like, yo. Mind you, I'm a sophomore in high school. And I'm in this, this big studio. And, um, you know, I never really been in the studio before. And I, they showed me how to use the equipment. And I get my beat going in Ant Arrogance, which later became Tom Giss, um, did his thing. That was my interest into the music industry. <clears throat> Later on, after high school, 2000, I got my deal with Bankers Interscope and Steve Stout and Ant, I mean Anton, Toneful Trackmasters. All these people was involved in this project. And the artist was Ox. And that started my career. I later went to Baltimore and got with Shy and Mark Davis. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Did the contest on 92Q with Sway. And I won the contest, and then that just started my whole thing, right? So, Tom Giss, um, we've been friends since 98. And since 1998, we've been making incredible records. I mean, Thinking Out Loud. Oh, man, so many records. I think Thinking Out Loud was the record that really got Cam, like, Cam's attention. I think Cam like really likes that record, and uh, that started a whole thing. Me and his collaboration has started a whole lot of things for him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A, tra a trajectory for him and for me. Just recently, we did um, Better Days, which is like a, a EP, and me and him did, and we're work currently working on the album together. Uh, so. I'm cooking and I'm looking for samples and things like that, inspirations to put that perfect thing together. Over the years, we've made so many great records that um, it's kind of, I got to be really careful with our collaborations because a lot of the fans or the supporters, they really know that when we get together, it's always right. It's kind of like when Nas and AZ, they don't have too many corny collaborations. When Nas and AZ get together, it's like, right? So. I wanted this collaboration really bad. I was working on an album called Monochrome. It's out on my store right now. I just submitted it to all streaming platforms. So um, maybe by next week it'll be everywhere. So I literally took my computer, my Beats headphones, and my microphone to his house in his basement, set it up. He recorded his verse there. It was amazing. And I did a demo of what my verse would be because I didn't want to be like LL. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do your verse and then I do mine later. Just like, you know what I'm saying? So that night, this is this is really key. That night, I played Rainbow's Mural for him. Now, I only had like two songs at that time. I played Rainbow's Mural and he got it right away. And it's crazy because he said, put us both on the track, you get electrocuted, which alludes to Ramo and Spit on the third rail, the track, on you know, Beat Street reference. And he didn't even know that I had a song called Ramo's Mural. I played it for him. And I was like, yo, this is going to be the last song on the album. He was like, yo, bro, you playing. That needs to be the first track. And right after that, this. And when I did that, it, it, it kind of like the lights went on and I really started to understand where I needed to go with monochrome and within a week and a half it was done. I want to thank y'all for um, just watching these videos, watching these videos, you know, some of them are really long, but I look at it like this. Stevie Wonder is one of my favorite artists, right? And if Stevie Wonder had 10, 15, 20 minute videos about some of the songs that he made that I loved, I would be all in, you know? I know the coronavirus is going around. I know y'all in the house. So hopefully you guys won't feel too bad about watching these videos. Um, I wanted to give you guys a little more than just, oh, check my album, check my mixtape. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to really explain like, um, some of the bars. So one of the, the most important bars that my brother always talks about, my brother Cut, is, um, you know, I'm sincere with the flow. I can't act the role. I play it's so close to who I am. Yo, T, be going to Africa, insider. Survey says I've been fire. You rubbing sticks together, right? 
that's a belly reference, right? So, Nas, me and my friends always joke about how Nas is not a great actor, right? But the role that Nas played in Belly was so close to who Nas is as we know him as a person. For the artist Nas was really close to that person that he plays sincere in Belly. So I just was like, the role I play is so close to who I am. You know what I'm saying? So that, that was one of the things. Another, another line I thought that was dope was, um, uh, the credit I get uh, A lot for putting these words together A rush, a drug For the credit I get for being dopamine You get it, dope I mean, dopamine Like I just thought that was dope <clears throat> uh, So I'm gonna end it now Next week, I don't know what's next But um, we have some videos On the way for next week We're dropping a snippet on Monday uh, the lyrics on Tuesday, the full video on Wednesday, breakdown on Friday. I'm trying to roll out the right way. And next week, I'll let you guys know when uh, it's going on all the platforms. I know it's a lot going on. I know you guys uh, may not have the money to buy my album and the book. Like, that's on the website. And I was still on the website. But um, for the people that's kind of tight right now, It'll be on the streaming platforms. You can enjoy it. I just ask that you share it and tell somebody if you think it's dope. Share it. And uh, i see y'all next week. My name is Vertical Jones. This is another breakdown video off my album Monochrome. Uh, in the description, uh, you can click the link and go to the album, buy it. Or you can wait for about a week. It'll be everywhere. All right? That's right on time because it's fading out too. Peace.